Hey folks, Mike and Charlie here, checking in. So, our original plan was to do a super intense fat loss diet, and we got most of that done. And the idea was to either get super lean and see what happens, or get super lean and potentially do a show. And uh, we were really, really on track, but it turns out that about six weeks before our scheduled show date, COVID-19 straight up canceled that shit. And it's not just that it canceled a show, it's it canceled all shows for mm -hmm. the foreseeable future. So we had some decisions to make and we ended up deciding to keep cutting a little bit, finish out, do a practice peak, body water manipulations, carb loading, stuff like that. Charlie even put some tanner on and practice some posing. We got our videographer to take some cool pictures of us. And it was really neat because, you know, peaking is a really intricate process and it's good to be able to practice it plenty, even if you're not competing. So that later when you do compete, you don't fuck it up like I have been my entire bodybuilding <laughs> career and miss time everything and not know what you're doing and carry tons of body water and stuff. So the peak actually went super well, I think. Yeah, um, I Charlie especially hit a really, really awesome look. And the thing is like, these peaking uh, videos and, and photos that you're looking at, they're not really, we're not really in peak condition, clearly. We're like probably six weeks out, if not a little bit longer, but we sort of did that on purpose because it was like, okay, we're pretty lean, time to give the body a little bit of a break. Because we're gonna be competing later because of COVID-19, it was one of those like, we could get in contest shape now, but like getting in contest shape for not competing is I guess a bit interesting, right? Like, yeah, it's very fatiguing. Super fatigue. So, that was the point. Also, another reason why we decided it was time to sort of can the diet, practice a little peak, and then do, you know, more stuff later. We'll talk about that in just a sec. Is that, you know, gyms are closed, right? And we're filming this now and gyms are just opening up. But like, we were training just at my house. Like, it essentially, pretty much every session is just at home with one barbell a set of dumbbells and a lat pull down. And honestly, like, look for general fitness and getting in really, really great shape. You can train at home with a barbell setup and a few, like one basic machine, no problem at all. But like we started running into some problems for our level of frequency, intensity, volume. We started to get some dings yeah. What kind of stuff did you run into, Charlie, as far as like, because it was really good training for like, geez, we did it for like eight weeks. But yeah. towards the end, it started to fall apart on us a little bit. What, what kind of stuff did you experience from just the low variation of just barbell work, essentially? Yeah, especially for me, it was the my shoulders. Yeah, the, the constant, uh, I guess, same repetitive motion of incline barbell and flat barbell. And those are pretty much the, essentially only movements we had what else you got right chest. yeah so like, no machines but, no heavy dumbbells yeah so like the variation so low and that's like one of the things we preach about you know when you alter your exercises and there's tons of uh, other videos on this channel about when to actually do that but like one of the times to alter your exercises is when you know you're having some aches and pains that are just getting a little worse a little worse a little worse mm -hmm. and variation isn't magical but one of the great things it does is it just takes the stress off of very specific structures like the very front of your shoulder hurts just a little every time you incline another week and another week and another week and another month it starts to get to be a real problem and because you are just doing that movement there's sort of nowhere to go with it and yeah. people say, well, just do something else. Well, that's the fu fucking thing is we didn't have anything else. <laughs> yeah, that's only an option um, at that point. And look, like we, we get as creative as we can. So your shoulder started to go a little bit on you. Yeah, then we started, you know, varying, you know, our load, you know, uh, started using kind of like uh, these giant sets. Slow weight push-ups, all that stuff. But, you know, that only takes so much load of fatigue off, uh, but not enough to the point where it keeps building and building and building. We had really no other options and I just kind of started falling apart at that point. Yeah, I had to actually, my adductor is just healing on me. You see that my adductor or my sartorius uh, started to get aggravated and it really hurt my leg training, but I wasn't hurting it doing leg training. I was hurting it because that position of deep stretch that I take during bent over rows, like we didn't have cable rows, we didn't have machine rows, we didn't have an ability to use heavy dumbbell bench rows. So what we did was we literally at one point 
most of the time, we were bent rowing. Remember that? We were bent rowing three times a week. Yeah. And we then, were doing classic heavy bent rows. We were doing rows to the chest, supersetted to rows to the tummy. That's all in that bent position, stretching out those structures. And then we were doing flexion rows, which yeah. are also in that position. And it even like, it even noticed it was catching up to me. And then at one point I was like, ow, what the fuck? And it just hurt all the time. And I'm like a week into active rest and it's now just starting to really, really heal. So it was like stuff like that. You sometimes wonder why like pro bodybuilders, not that we're pro bodybuilders, but like like really jacked people. But like sometimes wonder, like when I started out, Charlie started out, we were like barbells, dumbbells, machines are fucking lame. And like, it's true a large extent, but when you get really, really big and really strong, you're even just the supporting of your body under a barbell. Yeah. It gets to be like, you know what, if I could just sit down to do this and just hit my back and not hit my legs during rows, there's a there's a good thing there. That doesn't mean you do all machines, but like mostly barbell and dumbbell work is great with a sprinkle of machines. Oh, marron, <laughs> fucking beautiful. I'm still in Philly, I still got a say shit like that. Machines in the gym allow just for an overall better stimulus to fatigue ratio. Yeah. So when people say like, yeah, you don't really need the gym, you can just have a barbell at home, like for general fitness and getting in really good shape. Perfectly fine. 100%. For like, you know, when you need it, you need it. And we fucking need it. So we stopped the cut because we were falling into pieces. We got a, a lot of body fat off. And what are we doing now? So Charlie, what's your plan going forward? Originally, I was kind of playing with the idea of competing later this year. Um, but ultimately, we decided to kind of mass through the rest of the year. Uh, obviously take a big break first and then mass up until pretty much end of the year and then start a fat loss phase where I am hoping to compete uh, in spring of 2021. It's funny because I started, we started this whole thing thinking that I might be able to make way for uh, classic. Okay, yeah. you gotta tell that story. <laughs> so we had a little running bet between myself, Charlie and Jared Feather. I thought that Charlie was not going to lose a ton of weight on his fat loss diet, that he was going to like recomp a ton and just look fucking super big. He started his contest prep diet at like 235 six, yes, one minute. And uh, Jared uh, originally, because Charlie has a super great shape and you guys have seen it, Jared's like, Charlie's going to make classic. And the classic cutoff was 215? 212. 212. Two, two okay. So basically three weeks before we ended the diet, which is probably about nine weeks before we would have had to compete. Mm -hmm. Charlie, you weighed... 234. 234 <laughs> with glute striations coming in. And it was like, okay, but they, it's physically impossible to get down at 212 at this point unless yeah. we deplete him out of glycogen, lose 10 pounds of muscle. It would just be insane. So like that went out the window, right? And our plan was to do heavyweight, which is 225 cutoff. Yeah, and but then you would have made heavyweight yeah. had it been this time. But now Charlie's going to have basically five or six months of massing under mm -hmm. his belt. So he's done dieting right now. Now he's, him and I are both in active rest. Charlie does a low volume resensitization mesocycle and then starts to mass again, really ramps things up. And then one more mass and one more cut, since this is really Charlie's first run at bodybuilding, uh, bodybuilding supplementation, bodybuilding training, like hardcore, like all the way in, not like a mix of powerlifting and bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. Like the last, his last year was this first investment in bodybuilding and he must have gained like 10 or 15 at least, of yeah. muscle. So he's going to gain at least another 10. So like, bye bye heavyweight. I, I don't think he's going to make <laughs> no. heavyweight anymore. I think oh, he's just a super. So that's kind of sweet. Um, and then for me, uh, I'm for sure going to make heavyweight and I lost a bunch of fat. That was really great. And I'm uh, much leaner than I was. And I'm gonna do active rest for two weeks and then I move to Las Vegas, Nevada. So see you guys there. Jared Feather is gonna be there with me. And uh, yeah, Charlie and I are, we're just gonna like do a lot of like sexting and uh, Charlie's gonna come out and visit a whole bunch. But Jared and I, so when we get to Vegas, I'm like literally the next week starting a fucking crazy fat loss phase that's gonna last like literally to know how many weeks. I'm just gonna go balls out. Like I, one of two things is gonna happen. I'm gonna get injured, one of three injured, and I have to stop dead and I have to stop or get lean as fuck, period, okay? And I'm starting from a pretty lean state already, so it should be like really interesting times. As lean as you've been, so, yeah, 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 basically. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be super fun, uh, fun, fun for you guys to watch on video. It's not fun for me to do. So we started out, things were going super well, and then COVID nineteen was like, nah, fam. <laughs> and then we tried to train through that, but then accumulating injuries and yep. then the canceled shows. Yep. And, then... and we successfully made it like yeah. four to 15 weeks yeah. of fat loss, which and is And we good. had successful peaks, both of us. Yep, yep, yep. Figured out a lot of stuff. 
And if you guys have questions about the peak, that's something we'll probably do a bunch of videos on later. Jared's gonna get on this channel, on his own channel, and talk about technical, how to peak, how to peak for naturals, how to peak for non-naturals. It's a little bit of a different process. Yeah, just uh, what else we got, Charlie? Do we got any life lessons from this shit? Try hard and then try harder. We're, um, not. <laughs> we're not, that's cool. Bodybuilding's just a hobby. Folks, that's about it. Um, anticlimactic, fucking anticlimactic. But here's the deal, overarching theme. You get better by putting on muscle over the long term. And you can show how much better you are by losing fat in the medium term. Stuff that happens in the medium term and acute term, like a cut phase didn't go all that well or some crazy shit like COVID-19 happened. You, it's really easy to get caught up and be like, fuck, 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 fuck. But like really, Charlie and I are healthy. We have the most muscle we've ever had. We have like a really decent level of body fat. We collected a bunch of data and experience to use. 100%. Going forward. Yep. And it's all about doing the best with what you have. And look, Charlie and I, we don't have that much. Um, so if we have um, OnlyFans page, please, we need to eat. <laughs> send us anything money you have. We'll send you pictures that completely trade away our morality, which we already don't have. And maybe it'll bring you pleasure. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we got a fun video coming up for you next time in the series. Oh, the last yeah. video of the series. Uh, until then, peace.